Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Man the Maker and welcome to Star Trader's 10 Tips for Beginners video. Oh boy, I've had this on my mind for a long time. And uh, I've, I've accrued a fair amount of wisdom and I thought to myself, you know, some of this stuff would have been very, very, very useful to know when I had started this game. And I, and I would like to state now, you know, I, I'm not, or rather I'm trying to avoid being like too specific. We're not really going to get into like specific builds necessarily or like how to do exploring or how to do ship combat or, you know, I'm trying to be a lot more general, I'm trying to like help you discover the game yourself, right? Give you some tips that will push you into the right direction, kind of grease the wheels and let you just be able to explore this game and all that it has because it has a lot. It is a, uh, this is one reason why I love this game, why I've got 250 or 300 hours and I don't know, 10 series on YouTube uh, for the game. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. I, I It was really, really hard to break it down to 10 as well, but I wanted the video to, to have some brevity to it and not be an hour and a half long, because honestly I could probably talk for an hour and a half about advice on the game. But um, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in and begin with our 10 tips. Or beginners enjoy everybody number one and I thought it would be most appropriate to start with the beginning of the game building or creating your own class or captain of course you may opt to go for the pre-made ones and they are just fine but if you do not then really I think there's only kind of one real takeaway here that I, that I would give it, there's a lot, I don't think there's any one really overarching, this is what you have to do. Some people say experience is terrible. I've had amazing success with it on Impossible even, um, being at uh, the top tier and getting the most value from it. Whereas, you know, I always undervalue contacts, but maybe that's a mistake on my part. But you know what? What I will say is don't ever tank attributes. Attributes are always good. If you're going for a crew combat, it's incredibly important because you want to kind of max out more than half of them. Strength, Quickness, Fortitude, Wisdom, and Resilience are all good in crew combat. But even if you don't, Charisma and Wisdom are both almost always useful. They come up in so many so many missions, so many skill checks. They improve your crew. They're just There's so many like almost unseen benefits to them as well. And so that's what I have to say. Aside from that, you know, don't worry about messing around. Skills can be useful. Having a nice ship to start off can be useful. Lots of contacts can be. So I don't have a lot of experience can be useful. But attributes, always useful. So I wouldn't go below C. And that's it. On to the next one. Number two. The first thing we're going to be talking about today is trade. Now. Notice I didn't say the first tip we're going to be talking about because I'm actually cheating and breaking my own rules right away and I'm going to be sneaking in three different tips within this one overarching trade. Now, the, in the game, you can imagine trade is important. The game is called Star Traders Frontiers after all. And the tips that I have here are will break down to three, three different ones. The first one, as you're flying around, make small trades. Always be looking at the places that you are going to, the places that you are flying past, and consider, can I buy something there and sell it to somewhere else that's on my way? Another place that I'm going to next, or uh, even a place that I'm flying past. For example, in the early game, often you'll encounter clothing. Um, another one is uh, something crystals. I don't remember exactly what they are. You want to look for something that has high price per unit and try and pick that up. We can ignore these things because they require permits, but high price per unit, pick that up and we can see, okay, clothing is in demand on pop mining, refinery, and Lux pop zone. So I happen to be here at Zenite North, this industrial planet, which makes clothing. I say, oh, well, I was planning on flying out here to the Sumerian Spiral. But on my way is to Refinery Worlds. I might as well just buy the clothing and make the money. It's not going to be a lot, right? I mean, let's, uh, it's, it's going to make us 
2,000? I can even check. It's not going to be a huge amount. But it adds up. And if you keep doing this and you keep doing this. I mean, we made... Uh, actually, we made 7,120. That's not bad. <laughs> that's, that's better than I imagined. But you always want to be looking for this kind of thing. Because as you just fly around, you know, you incur costs. And this can really help offset your operating costs. Uh, so really, take a look. Try and make these small sales. We'll do it. Boop. Done. Just made an easy 7,000. We barely flew out of our way. The second tip that I will say, and this is something that you kind of want to do from the very beginning, is aim immediately for level 4 trade permit. You can always get this from your starting faction through Caligan Fane, right? The, the Duke that you can start doing story missions for. You can always get it. You will have to work for him for a decent amount of time. And they do cost a fair amount of money. Um, but aiming for it early on can make a huge difference because when you get the level 4 trade permits you get access to things like the power generators here you get access to things like small craft components or extractors and these can make you so much money really like if I filled up my hold with power generators which I can do in the system I'm in we'll get to that in a moment I could fly around for a week and make 50k and then I could leave, right? Uh, I don't have to worry about it. I just made that 50k, bing, bang, boom. Easy. It really makes a big difference. The one thing, of course, if you get the level 4 trade permit, you can lose it if you incur, I think, more than 4 reputation. So you got to be a little bit careful. It is a significant investment, but it's definitely something to keep your eyes on because it can really kind of help you out as you're just flying around. The last thing to note, which kind of fits, right? Once you have level 3 or level 4 trade permits... Is kind of keep your eyes open for routes that you can make that are somewhat uh, repeatable. I mean, they're all repeatable, but that are easy, often in within one system, and is a place that you'll be going to somewhat frequently. So for me, one of the reasons that I like to play as Taloon, for example, is they start in this system. You start over here, Les Cumes Pass. Don't know really how to say that. Les Ecumes Pass. Because in this system, especially, again, once I have level 4 trade permits, I can go, right, this is just a trade route that I that I figured out. From here, I can buy those power generators, I can buy small craft components, and I can buy uh, advanced medicines, let's say. I then take these things, I fly down to this one, another industrial, I can buy more power generators, more uh, explosives or advanced medicines, things that are demanded by Tradeway, I then fly down to here, drop everything that is wanted in the Tradeway, which is the small craft components and the explosives and the advanced medicines, fly up to the orbital, pick up even more uh, power generators and, uh, I forget what they're called, gas uh, something? Uh, I'm not entirely sure, which is also sold here, and then finally make my way back to Tulum Prime, where I can unload pretty much everything, maybe stopping at the farming world, and make a huge pile of money for a very, very short time investment. So you want to kind of look for these. As you play the game, you'll start to kind of learn uh, what takes what. Until then, you know, just kind of pay attention and look around, because uh, it's very valuable information to have. And then you can start making these trades. Again, Whenever I would come to this system to complete a mission, to go talk to somebody, to work with a contact that I have here, I would just do this quick run and I would leave 100,000 richer than I had before. Now, I mean, in this ship I have 1.4 million, right? I mean, I'm not at a, a want for money, but I would so often do it. Uh, and this is part of the way that I got this, right? Even if I'm making hundreds of thousands from missions or getting into fights and making money that way or, or whatever it may have you, just having this as an option, and it's not the only place. I mean, I'm not going to point them out for you, but there are other systems, sometimes even between two, that uh, you can really, really make a lot of money from. And uh, that's it for our trade tip. On to the next one. Number three. The next thing that we're going to be giving out here today is to check your orbital ops. If you're unfamiliar with what orbital ops are, when you are orbiting a location, planet, moon, whatever may have you, 
patrol, blockade, and spy. Now, oftentimes, you're not going to be a, a patroller or a blockader or a spy, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't check it. Almost always, I try to do this always, I say almost because I forget all the time, but it's still, it's very important to check patrol, check blockade, and check spy. Even if you don't, like I said, if you don't have the build for it, just take a look because sometimes you're gonna get to a place that has really good rewards with no downside. I mean, let's take this, right? Unexpected ship, learning rumor, we can face a pirate bounty. This is not particularly great for us if we're, say, not fitted for combat. Same thing um, with the spy. Like, oh, there's a hostile pirate here. But let's say that this isn't a hostile pirate. Let's say this is intel records. You might take some damage. You might take some crew damage. But you can make a bunch of money. You can gain experience. Or you can get intel. And it's often worth, like, hmm. Am I, am I happy to risk gaining the intel? at the expense of spending a little bit of time and money to heal up my crew. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Same thing with patrolling. Sometimes you're just going to get a really nice draw and you'll be able to just jump into things. And this is especially important because in particular patrolling and spying are two fantastic paths to getting you two very important things. Reputation. You can use patrolling to farm reputation and spying. You can use spying to farm intel records. And both of these are incredibly, incredibly useful in their own right. We're not going to get into that necessarily so much here, but keep it in mind. Always, always, always check this stuff because you don't know when you're going to start finding something good, especially once you start picking up some talents that let you, you know, remove one thing, right? If we remove this, then maybe it's not so bad. Same thing here. Ah, we can just remove the pirate and maybe, maybe I would do it. Probably not here, nonetheless. But, you know, there are many situations where that will be the case. So always take a look. Make the decision then. It won't cost you much time, but can give you substantial benefits. On to the next. Number four. Next up, we have Intel records. Now, I had already started talking about this a little bit in the last one, um, but I really thought it needed to be kind of expanded upon, just so you know how valuable Intel records really are and why. Now, the best way to get Intel records is, of course, to just go and spy for them. There are certain talents that you can get. You know, having a spy on board will obviously help this, but also electronics techs are quite useful for this. Um, there are several other ways and different talents in which you can get in them, which I won't get into. I'll let you discover that on your own. But they are so incredibly useful because they can really, they, they have two, in my eyes, extra special uses, right? Now, what do you do with them? You sell them to contacts. The two cases in which this is particularly notable, I didn't, didn't actually go and find this. Um, I want to filter somebody who buys Intel. There's two cases. One, the only way that I can get reputation with the Stell Brockstrom is by selling her intel. If I ever want her introduction to her bounty hunter recruits, I have to sell her intel. She will not do it any other way. Same thing with this guy. He just won't do it. Same thing with this. Same thing with this. Same thing with this. Same, right? There's a lot, a lot of them. This guy, yeah, you can do missions for them. Um, or he'll buy intel. But a lot of them don't. And sometimes, you know, if you want, you have that one contact who can sell you weapons or recruit you a commander or something, and you can't do missions for them, you have to do the intel. So gaining intel as often as you can, which again ties into before, always checking those orbital ops can make a huge difference. The other aspect to this is to just bootstrap your relation with these people, right? Say you're flying around, you might meet a new contact who's got the thing that you want, whatever that may be. Um, even if they take missions, you really, really, really need a doctor. You could do missions for them for a while, but if you've accumulated a bunch of intel, you could just go there and just dump a bunch of it on them. And suddenly you've got the reputation that you need in order to recruit a doctor. And this can really, really, like when you have some kind of singular focus and you're like, I need to get a doctor, I just wanna go, I hate doing medical missions. I really don't like them. They're going to make me go exploring all over the place. I don't have people who can do crew combat or something like that. Or, you know, somebody else who's going to send you on military missions, but you're not uh, a military kind of person. 
bounty missions, right? Ah, oh, I really want to get these assassins, but I don't want to do the missions. Sell them the intel, get the assassins. You know, so it's it's really, really, really important. Intel records, intel just makes the world go round. So don't forget about them. There are lots of different contexts, uh, not contexts, traits, talents, there we go, talents that can give you access to them aside from just spying, but I mean, spying is the most straightforward way. So as I said before, don't forget about it. Get that spying in, keep intel records in your mind. On to the next. Number five. For this next tip, we're gonna be talking a little bit about your skill pool and what to do, why it matters, where's the sweet spots, and why you wanna keep it over 100% as often as you can. Now, we can see here, we've got all of these skill pools. Only these actually have a percentage and the rest of them down here do not. That's because these are requirements for your ship. You probably know this already. If you don't, well, there you go. Getting it up to 100%, so for pilot, we need 56 pilot skill. If we don't have that, we're going to have big problems. Always have the minimum. Always have it. It will cost you so much time, so much money, um, and just, it's it's not worth it. Never worth it. Even if you got to hire some people just to fire them the next time you land, it's always worth doing. Just don't fly around with less. Now, getting it over is also pretty good. And a lot of these are used for um, skill checks, for example. So having it under 100% will mean you're gonna fail a lot of skill checks. <clears throat> having it at 200% means that you will likely pass most of them. Over 200%, you're not getting any benefit from it. Now we say it likely, because it doesn't guarantee it. Because you'll notice a lot of the things, a lot of your modules give bonuses to this, right? Plus four ship ops, plus three, plus nine gunnery, plus two electronics, plus four ship ops. And you might ask yourself, but why if I give myself a bonus, let's say I add another 10 to the navigation, suddenly I'm not maxed out anymore. And it's because the total number of these also makes a difference. It's not just your percentage here. It's also how high it is because you're actually being, it's being compared often against something else. And so having a higher number will just give you more dice. Right, that, that's like the core of the game. The game is the game is built up on dice. Having 47 at 100% will give you a certain amount of dice. Having double that, having the 94 or whatever, um, will give you X amount more. If I raise my total skill cap and I can just have higher dice and have them be effective, this will raise the total number of dice that I roll. So having higher, like for example, Having higher electronics, just boosting this, this is one of the reasons why you will fly around with nav assist modules. It gives plus seven navigation. This is just raising my caps, which is allowing me to have more navigation, which is making my ship better at navigating, making it easier to close range at distance, all the things that navigation does. The one final bit is in combat, 100% is the max. You only get dice up to 100% percent navigation same thing for gunnery and in particular we're going to use gunnery here because gunnery isn't really used for anything else i don't even think it gives you many skill checks maybe meteors no uh, potentially you can use it in some other things but i really feel like it's pretty much only used in combat and you see here in combat you only get dice up to 100 percent gunnery so why would we want it to be at 200 percent I mean, we're at 284. It's because I have a very, very low gunnery cap here. We're not going to worry about that. That's just a, a caveat of the build that I have. Why well, have it over 100%? Well, in combat, one torpedo shot from your opponent smashes through your armor, smashes through your heel, uh, your, your heel, your shield, through the hull, there we go, and into your crew quarters, killing two of your gunners. Who were just happening to make their way over to their guns. They were they were rerolling, they're running around the hallway, boom, done. All of a sudden, I mean look, let's say we only had hundred percent, not 284. All of a sudden, you're you have half of the gunnery skill that you needed. You're not gonna hit anything anymore. The same goes for electronics. I mean, this is not that much higher. If they knock out two, three of my electronics techs, or anybody with electronic skill, suddenly this can start dropping below. And this is like 
really, really important because knocking out um, crewmen, knocking out components that give bonuses, plus seven pilot, for example, knocking this stuff out makes that drop. And this is really the way to do it. Now, if you can just knock them out and suddenly they don't have, they don't have uh, the gunnery skill to hit you, the fight's going to be easy because you killed enough of their crew. But you can prepare for this by having much higher percentages. I think I've got to sneeze here. Oh boy. Nope. Nope. So it's very, very important for that. The other, the other skill pools here are also very important because they're used in so many other ways, but they don't have a cap. They don't have a requirement. These requirements, however, they're kind of there because as the game progresses, things get harder. This is kind of a little bit of a secret, which we will touch on in a different a different one but just know i mean obviously having higher doctor skills better having higher command skills better if you're going to be doing command things or doctory things or explorey things so we don't need to talk about that and that's it for skill pool on to the next one which is uh pretty relevant for this number six the next tip is not honestly one of the sexier tips i'm like of course, most of the other ones here today, um, but still very, very important and something that like had not really sunken in for me for a long time. The information was there, but I just didn't really pay attention. And that's the difference between strong and standard dice. They both will come up very often in lots of different skill checks. When you do missions, you often see two things listed. It might be charisma, or your captain's charisma. And um, Captain's Quickness, it might be Captain's Charisma, and ships, uh, or your crew's um, ship ops. And all you really need to know is that Standard Dice is half as strong as Strong Dice. So let's say we have 40 Strong Dice and 40 Standard Dice. This gives us an effective dice roll of 60 dice. Let's say the opponent has... 20 strong dice and uh, 60 standard dice. Right? We have the standard, gives them 30. They have a, a effective dice roll of 50. We can use this to really kind of have an idea of our odds. Of course it is dice. This game is very, very RNG heavy. Uh, this can be infuriating at times, for sure, but uh, such as it is. And um, just just keep that in mind when you ever kind of see these kinds of things come up. Like in this situation, we have 82 strong and half of our attribute 6 standard. This is effectively the same as 85 strong dice. And you can use that as a quick math to kind of just pop into your brain and be like, do I want to go for this option or this one? This one looks like it has a lot more dice, but maybe it doesn't actually. And, I wanted to throw that in here. Like I said, it's probably the least sexy of all of these tips, but it is very, very, very useful. Uh, it can help you make some proper decisions. So, on to the next. Number seven. This next tip is really the only one that's kind of specific to a certain play style. Um, everything else is very generalist. This is only really uh, useful if you're going to be getting into ship combat. I thought I'd bring it up because I think it's really, really, really valuable. Um, and that's the the power of evasion, not getting hit. Even if you have all the armor and the shields in the world, one lucky shot can kill a crewman, can knock out a component, and this can really, really do damage to you. And have a cumulative effect on the next shot and the next shot and the next shot. Whereas if you just manage to dodge everything, then you don't have to worry about it. There's two ways you can really kind of do this. Boosting electronics and pilot. On this ship in particular, I really went heavy into the electronics. That's why I have these um, sensor arrays, for example. I don't actually care about the accuracy or the hit craft. I care about the electronics that they give. Um, lots of components that are giving me electronics. As well as defense pattern matrices, which make it harder for you to hit just with a percentage boost. I'm not going to get into any of the math there, but just know that boosting these things up if you're getting into ship combat is very, very, very useful. Um, and I tend to prioritize it even over armor and shields. I mean, we're still up to 60%, so it's not like we're um, super weak. Lots and lots of money can help you do that. <laughs> you know, like having things like uh, shielded hangar bays, um, the behemoth engine, yes, giving armor and shields. Um, 
So that goes a long way. There's also the, the talents that you can use. Things like evasive maneuvers is one of my favorites. Uh, level one pilot talent, um, but gives 25% evasion. Half of the reason I use aircraft, not on this ship, I have another ship that just has two fighters, uh, interdictors, because I can launch them on the first turn and they each give 10% evasion. And I couple that with evasive maneuvers and I'm starting out with a 45% bonus plus the 30% that the other ship has. And I'm just like impossible to hit. So really, really good to do that. If you're going into ship combat, definitely consider, you know, kind of focusing in on that. I think that is a bit of the meta as well. And uh, that's it for this tip. On to the next. Uh, number eight. For our next tip, I thought I'd kind of take something on that's pretty, pretty easy to explain, but it's not something that I had really thought about uh, for a long time until I had really gotten into the game. And that is time as a resource, right? As the game goes on, uh, you do things, time passes by. And I hadn't really thought about it very much, but I've come to realize that time is one of the more valuable resources in the game. Because as you get further in the game, it scales, right? Enemies get harder, they get higher level, they get better ships, you find more challenges. Also something is that um, your dice rolls as you fly around and uh, you know you encounter these things, these also get harder. Your skill checks get more difficult, get more damage. I mean, okay, we're in a radiation storm, so things are going to be really bad here. But things get more challenging as you go on. And it's really like, I find it to be rather important to keep it in your mind. I mean, you know, you can only do so much to get around it, but I think it's really important to have it in your mind that time is not something that you can just ignore, right? Think about how, you know, if I get into this fight, if I do this, if I do that, how much time will it take? Because the world will progress. If you're sitting in your ship and you're building it up for two years, you're gonna come out and everything is gonna be a little bit harder. And you're not gonna have gained the experience, you're not gonna have gained the new components, the new crew, whatever, uh, to kind of match that. So keep it in your mind, try and be a little bit careful with it. Again, there's only so much you can do. But it's something that is not so obvious and uh, I think can also be rather important. And uh, that's all for this one. On to the next. Number nine. The next one that we're going to be talking about here is skill saving talents. Now, what is that? If you're very new, you might not know. Uh, no, don't promote them. Um, it is talents like expert maneuver automatically passes a failed pilot test in any situation. Um, most classes have one. I forget if you apparently do not. Um, apparently you do not either. I think you've got an electronics one there. Electronics test. All right, you've got one for doctor. You've got one for tactics, navigation, piloting, um, ship ops, pretty much everything. All of these. As well as command, doctor, explore, intimidate, negotiate. I'm not sure about repair. Stealth and tactics. I'm not sure, actually sure about repair. But in the early game in particular, they are very, very, very useful. And it is highly recommended to pick up a couple of some of the more common ones, like pilot, ship ops, electronics, and navigation. As many of the doctor as you can. And then also, if you're going to be like, doing certain stuff if you're going to be involved in negotiation a lot then you might want to pick those up because they really can save your butt not even just for missions right but as you fly around and you trigger all of these things over here it can cost so much time so much money and uh really just slow you down make you broke and it's very 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 much worth picking up now there is one downside to them is that when they trigger, you don't gain experience. Because normally as you fly around, you gain experience when you pass these tests, probably also when you fail them. The skill state talents prevent that. But the trade-off is well worth it because it can just cost you, as I said, so much time, so much money. So it's highly recommended to pick up a couple of the more common ones. Like I said, pilot, gunnery, electronics, navigation, as many doctor as you can get, command, that's probably the most important ones. I mean, I usually pick one tactics as well. I think the navigator gets it. And uh, yeah, it really will save you a lot of time and a lot of effort. And that's it for this one. On to the next. 
number 10. And lastly, prepare for the Xeno, for they are coming. This tip is a bit more general than just the Xeno, but it's essentially have a way out if you get into fights or encounters. Doesn't matter if you are a total badass. I mean, my ship right here will completely outclass this guy. We'll be able to take him out without any issues here. But nonetheless, I'm still decked out with in combat talents. I mean, some of them are sharp steering here. We've got uh, fast getaway. Um, the spy, for example, has bolt, which is probably the best one. If you get stuck into combat and you can't get away, then this is the way you got to do it. Doing it against Zeno is not a great idea because they can decimate you in just a few shots. Uh, if you're not, uh, if you're, if you're not lucky, you can really get hurt. But against other people as well. And why? Even if we can defeat them, why care so much? Well, sometimes you just end up in a bad situation. Your ship takes a bunch of damage. You're flying through a radiation storm. You get into one tough fight and then a second one springs on you. And to that end, there's also other ways to do it without even getting to the screen. And that's things like, um, for the Xeno, there's only one. I forgot its name, actually. <laughs> Um, it's skip off the void level 11 navigator talent super 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 good um, and I almost I almost keep a hyperscape navigator officer just to get it as soon as possible only probably necessary on harder difficulties but still it's that useful but you got things like um, stiff salute to get away from military officers that are hostile you got things that can get you away from bounty hunters things that can get you away from pirates it's very important to have these, or at least have a plan, especially if you're not combat oriented, but even if you are. So just thought I would throw this one in there. Be ready, because they're coming. Danger is coming. Winter is coming. Mm, that was good. And there you have it. Man the Makers, 10 tips for beginners to survive and thrive in Star Traders Frontiers. Hopefully that this has filled out some of the gaps in your knowledge, answered some of your questions. Maybe some more questions have risen to the service. If that is the case, ask them down below in the comments. You can also join my Discord, which you will find uh, in the description. And you can ask me there, I'm there all the time. If you enjoyed this entire experience, don't hesitate to like, it does help me out. And it's just merely an expression of your will in the end. If you liked what you see here and you want more, well, don't uh, don't be afraid to subscribe either. Uh, we got videos coming out all the time. I had so much fun with uh, doing this. This is the first time that I've made a tips video. Most of the time I just do Let's Plays. All of the time I just do Let's Plays. But more stuff like this is coming. You probably don't want to miss that. For Star Traders as well as some other things. So do hit that subscribe button and join me. I'm also on Twitch if you ever want to join me, Man the Maker, quite easy to find. All these things are down below, as well as the Patreon, which I just started. If you want to join me on this journey, get some of those sweet perks that are available. Again, find it all down below. And, and that's it. Tips are over. Lessons have been learned. Wisdom has been passed on. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Till next time, my name is Man the Maker. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful day.